Hey guys, Elementrix here. Hope you're all doing well and welcome back to the channel. We are back with another Breach Ability Guide video. We'll be taking a look at the best spots on every map that you should be using every single match. The spots that I'm about to show you have worked consistently for me since the release of Valorant and they have helped me climb from Silver 2 in the closed beta to Diamond 2, which is where I am currently sitting after less than 20 competitive matches played. Let me know in the comments if you have any really good spots that I have not covered in this video. That way anyone reading can also learn some new spots. I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday and Sunday, so I hope to see you on the next stream. Just join in, be yourself and have a good time. Keep in mind that everything I'm showing you is in a step-by-step -step fashion, meaning it is theoretical and once you're in a live game, everything will play out much faster, meaning you need to assess the situation and adapt accordingly. None of these spots are in any order and I'll have the timestamps down below in case you wish to jump to any certain map or ability spot. Let's jump into the very first and my favorite map, Haven. Alright guys, so let's just start off with the very first one. And usually in the first round, what I like to do is, um, I usually go for the ghost. I always buy one flashpoint and one aftershock, right? And then we're just gonna turn off the game phase. And basically what's gonna happen here is once this barrier goes up, I like to take a quick peek here to see if there's any movement. If there's movement and I see people are like pushing up uh, really fast, what I like to do is not take that fight because usually you'll be up going up against uh, 1v2, 1v3. I like to fall back, pop out my flash, wait for the steps to get really close, and then just pop it off this corner over here. It's basically going to get anyone in this entire area. Um, the only things you need to watch out for. Number one, if anyone is holding this angle back here, it's not going to flash them. Number two, is that if anyone is holding this angle back here, it's not going to flash them either. So you got to be kind of careful with those two angles. And the last one is, if you pop your flash here, and they've maybe already pushed up um, this far, what's going to happen is they're going to see the flash going out, and they're going to see you... Um, coming out of the corner and they'll be able to pre-fire you. So just keep that in mind um, to make sure that you don't pop it too early and you don't pop it too late. What you want to do is pop it somewhere where they're in the middle over here. Um, and usually that guarantees you at least one to even sometimes three kills. I've gotten three kills like that very easily. Steph say, many. Blinding. No match. You're nothing. Okay, and the next spot which I use very often, practically any time the team or the enemy team is rushing up onto the bomb site, what I like to do is uh, not take a peek. What they usually do is they throw utility, uh, they make a lot of noise on long, uh, probably even uh, making noise from short, so you can kind of get an idea of how many players are where. And what you want to do is wait for them to be stuck into um, this area right here, just here in the open, because they can't really get anywhere. And uh, off there. Wait, um, I wouldn't say a whole second, but wait half a second before peeking in case anyone is going to pre-fire that. I've kind of learned that with Breach nowadays. When you flash, you wait, and then you peek. And usually you can catch at least one person off guard over here that is not expecting the flash. Um, you'll probably flash at least three people, depending, because it also gets anyone coming from short. They will fall back, they will pop back into cover from long as well, but then it gives you enough uh, time for your team to rotate. So... This spot is really effective and it works in both ways on when you're trying to retake, of course, as well as when you're sitting on the site and they're trying to push up and they're aggressing onto the site. One enemy remaining. Uh, nice. All right, so let's move on to C bomb site. And this is actually a retake spot. What you want to do is just pop up your ultimate ability and make sure that it's basically hitting this right corner over here all right the way there. to uh, everything on the right side. Um, once you have that lined up, you can just pop your ultimate. You come out here, make sure that you don't expose yourself too much. But all of this is happening very fast. So then you pop your aftershock and you kind of come here first. You clear this, this side over here. Don't worry too much about anything happening over here, right? Because 
Once they see your ultimate ability coming in, they're going to go hide in this corner or they're going to run away. They're not going to be standing in the open. If they are, it's an easy kill. But anyways, you're coming out of this corner, you check your left side, and then you work your way into here. This happens all really fast, so after you pop your aftershock, don't worry about this corner either, because they're going to have to be dealing with the aftershock, so your back is kind of covered. And then you can actually flank around here and catch anyone uh, off guard that is that has you know fallen back uh, from the ultimate. And the only thing you would need to worry about is if a guy is sitting up on long and is uh, kind of pushing up to help his teammates. But other than that, everyone on site will kind of be either disoriented or they will be, um, you know, in an uncomfortable position since they've had to move away from the uh, ultimate ability. Loss is low okay, to garage. Spike planted. Headshot. I got my ult. Go! Go! One enemy remaining. Nice, let's go, dude. All right, now we're moving on to the attacker side. Um, I think one of the best spots that breach can really that you can use breach really well is um, anything in here in double doors. So basically, uh, sometimes people will be sitting in this corner. Uh, before they added this uh, thing over here, people would also sit in this corner. So sometimes it would be more effective to pop your aftershock into here to make sure that this side is clear. However, now because you know they're kind of exposed here, you don't really have to deal with that. It's better to just pop your aftershock directly into that. So it'll look something like this. The barrier will be here. Just as soon as the barrier, um, you know, opens, you want to pop that. And then come out. And basically anyone in window uh, will have to fall back. Anyone over here will be flashed. Anyone sitting in this corner is basically the only thing you have to worry about. Because it's not going to flash them if they're hiding in deep here. But again... That is essentially the only angle that you need to be uh, that you need to be careful of, and once they're flashed, you need to get another teammate to help you right smoke there. window. Once you've smoked window, you've basically taken over control over C short. You can easily come over here, and if nobody's watching you, just do this kind of fast. Either pop your flash directly off here, pop your flash off this thing, or you can even, if you want to, uh, and my personal favorite is pop a flash off that. Um, it won't flash the guy on here but it'll flash anyone um, back on platform, anyone over here. Um, so it kind of covers more angles and the only one you really need to worry about is uh, is the one close left. Left side. What do I need to do? Go long or short. We're going to see. Okay. Last shot. Right there. All right, so jumping onto the next map, and that is split. Um, this spot that I'm going to show you is an effective way to kind of push up onto mid and then eventually make your way into uh, B heaven. So what you want to do now, again, I'm just going to show you this in theory, right? It's going to play out very different for you in game. And just because you see me running with my aftershock like this in the open, I obviously don't do that uh, mid game, but just show you guys in theory how this works and then we'll take it into an in-game example So what you want to do is just make sure that you pop your aftershock somewhere over here to make sure that um, No one's gonna be peeking from there take out your flash pop your flash into there Make sure that this side is clear Anyone watching this angle will be flashed and will be forced to fall back take out your second flash flash right there And then you come out and you've basically taken control over uh, heaven Usually there'll be a guy playing back here or there'll be a guy into there and after you flash they'll be forced to kind of go back into these corners. Worthless. All right, and this next spot that I'm going to show you is right over here on A site and it's just very quick because 
Um, I've kind of already covered this in previous videos a little bit more in detail, but it's super effective still to basically pop your aftershock or your fault line first into um, this area and then pop your uh, aftershock straight after. Now, I just want to give you guys a few pointers. First of all, it's most effective if you have a player, um, someone like a Phoenix, uh, preferably a Phoenix playing up here, because what he can do is he can pop a flash if he or he if he hears steps around here. Once his flash comes around this corner, these guys are going to be literally they're going to be forced to come into this corner, right? They think they're safe here. And exactly then when you see on the map uh, that Phoenix that is right playing there. over here has spotted people right into a main and he's going to spot them coming into this corner. That's when you as Breach playing on a site can just simply pop your fault line and then directly aftershock. And again, I get many kills like this. Uh, I've actually, funny enough, I've actually seen Breach players start to use this a lot more, uh, especially when we're coming up against another Breach that plays a site. Um, so, you know, it's good to see that. I think uh, it's really effective. The only thing that you guys just need to be uh, careful about is not to do it too early, because if you're doing it too early, then these players are still right up here. They haven't even pushed up uh, into right this there. corner. So just wait until they come up into here and then do it. Yeah, that was an accident stun on the Phoenix. You hear anything? They mean? Yeah, he's mine, he's mine, he's mine. Get out of here. They were two there, two there. Sua, Sua, smoke a bit. Alright guys, so moving on to the next map and that will be Bind. Um, for this next spot, you can, it's most effective if you have its ultimate ability, since as you can see on the map right now, it literally covers all of short. Um, but you can do the same thing if you want to use this fault line, or if you want to use a flash um, anywhere here, anywhere uh, on this box. Um, and playing this spot with Breach is just uh, really effective. This spot, as well as if you have your ultimate ability, you can also play uh, something over here. Uh, I wouldn't play the spot uh, if I wouldn't have my ultimate ability, just because it's it's a little bit hard to escape uh, if they've been pushing up now into short. But again, what you just want to do is pop your ultimate um, somewhere across this, and it will basically right get there. everyone um, into this corner. You can even angle it a bit more if you know that they haven't pushed up yet, or uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, you can also use it um, coming from this side over here. And when you're about to pop it, it's they're gonna run away anyone standing in this corner is pretty much dead anyone in that corner is also dead and the other ones that are uh, at the back are basically then going back into cover giving you the room you need to kill the guys into these corners over here one enemy remaining good shit yo dude you're insane all right, and we're still staying on a site because we're going to be taking a look at a retake spot that I think, uh, or a retake strat that I think is is really nice with uh, with breach. Depending on how much utility you have, what you can do is if you know they're planting behind truck, just pop your aftershock. If you have your fault line, combine it. Obviously, um, you might get an easy kill on the guy trying to plant the bomb. But the next step is what you want to do is make sure that you clear lamps. Lamps is is I think one of the most like important things to clear in order to retake the bomb site because especially if you have another teammate and they're making noise and they're pushing up on from a site and you're taking control over lamps it just kind of puts extra pressure uh, on the enemy team to kind of watch two angles but essentially what you want to do don't use too much utility to to clear um to clear lamps i think you can with just you know these name you can just clear this easily and the next thing you want to do is uh, make sure that you flash closer to this side. Now, the reason I say closer to, to the door over or the entrance over here is because it's going to flash anyone playing that corner. It's going to flash any guy over here. It's not going to flash anyone playing on short, but uh, then again, you don't need to flash them because they're not a direct threat to you. So again, just pop your flash here, come around, check to make sure that this side is clear, and then pro hopefully or pr most probably there will be a guy playing uh, in this corner and it'll be an easy kill. If you still have a flash available, well, then you already know what to do. It's just on this wall, or even if you want to, behind this box over there. Um, to
here. Where's last? Short to short. Nice, let's go. The fucking best, dude. Oh, she hit me in the leg, I think, through the wall as well. Holy shit. All right, now moving on to B site. I think um, if the enemy team is pushing up hookah, you can really, really do some damage um, when you're playing breach. The first thing you want to do is um, behind cover, of course, make sure that, you know, you can use your fault line, whether you're playing from CT or whether you're playing uh, on site, it doesn't really make a difference. Uh, and what I like to do is preferably use the fault line and the aftershock to clear uh, the left side uh, because that's kind of the entrance uh, as to where they're coming in or um, clearing this corner over here is extremely effective as well. So what you want to do, just pop your fault line down there. Uh, you can either pop it into this uh, corner over here if you know someone's there or you can just uh, pop it right over there. That's really going to delay them. Um, it's going to delay them or it's going to force them to then come into this corner over here or force them to push up. And from there, once you've done that, I like to just take out a flash, pop it into any of these corners over here and then take a peek. They're either going to be stuck in the open or again, they're going to be forced to go into this corner or that corner which, you know, these are easily wall bangable. So not much you need to do there. Just spam that and they're pretty much, pretty much dead. Enemy spot. Window, window. Forever. Headshot. So what I miss? Enemy spot. Garden. Enemy remaining. Oh, oh, one. already, already up. Oh, he's dinked. He's very low, very low. Now, I always say that it's extremely important to mix things up. Uh, not only when you're playing Breach, but uh, especially when you're playing Breach, because you don't want your flashes to be really predictable either. And one of the really good things you can do is maybe if you know they're on an eco round or if you're hearing a lot of steps and you, you hear them pushing up, just flash this spot over here and then wait a half a second and then take a peek. Um, you can also just flash a simple uh, spot right over here. And what that's going to do is also flash if anyone is watching that angle. Because keep in mind that this flash over here doesn't flash anyone uh, holding a sharp angle on you like that. So that's the only thing you need to worry about. All right, and this next spot, which I really like to use, is on long. Um, I don't use it very often, but I think it is um, a spot that I'm going to start using a lot more now. Again, as I just mentioned before, I really like to switch things up. So I'm going to show you first a very passive spot, which you can do, is actually just play this angle over here and listen for steps. Once you hear steps, pop your flash. Again, wait half a second and then peek. You have the opportunity to wait half a second because... The flash is, what is it? It's about two seconds and they're stuck in the open over here. So they don't really have anywhere to go. Flash, wait, and then peek. And uh, you pretty much get, you know, everyone that's just stuck in the open. They're like sitting ducks. Split B, I think. And um, moving on to then the second spot that I really like to do, and it's uh, when the barrier is still down. What I like to do is um, go out really fast, literally with my knife out. I don't even bother taking my gun out. I go out really fast, pop out the flash really fast into this corner, another one again, and then I come out and man, the amount of times people are just sitting out here in the open, uh, even further back over here, they're pretty much done for, right? So... I've done this a few times, works really well. However, do not do that, you know, round after round after round because that is really predictable. Um, you do have enough time to come around this corner, flash, and then hug this wall, flash again. 
I don't think they they don't really manage to make it up here in time to see you. So they'll sp still be stuck behind this fountain thing. Um, so that's an aggressive breach play that I really think uh, works really well and it's extremely effective. All right, and now I just briefly want to talk about attacking with Breach on Bind. Unfortunately, I do not have a lot of clips, <laughs> uh, simply because I actually, after going over all of my gameplay, I realized that I am so much better on defense uh, with Breach on Bind than I am on offense. And I haven't really figured out why that is, but uh, I'm still trying to, you know, change up my play style and see what uh, I need to improve on. Uh, but one of the spots that I think works really well, and it's... Maybe not effective at getting many kills, but it's effective at allowing your team to push up short and getting the room they need in order to push up onto the side. So, someone usually plays this corner and um, you're most likely not going to get a kill on him. But what you are going to do is force him out of that corner, right? So, if he's playing anywhere here he and the aftershock comes through this wall, he's going to be forced to fall back. Um, so... Really effective as well at giving the, your team the room they need. And then combine that with a nice flash up there. And then anyone in heaven is flashed. Anyone back of side is flashed. Even if the guy is still there, he's flashed. Um, and again, also anyone playing close to bathrooms is flashed. So that's a flash I really like to do. Um, and that's one, also one of the reasons I don't have many clips. Because I don't see the direct effect of it. But what I do notice is that the amount of times I flash up there, no one's peeking us. Everyone is back into cover and you basically then have the room you need in order to quickly make it across over here and then start to clear uh, into lamps, right? So uh, definitely give that a try, a combination of aftershock and then a nice flash uh, up there onto that wall. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, you already know what to do. And if you're new to the channel and you really enjoy this kind of content, then why not consider subscribing? So take care, stay safe, and I'll talk to you guys later.